Hi, I'm here today with Warren Dale, a mixing and pumping expert uh, who has had a long and illustrious career in the industry. And today we are going to be talking about the similarities and differences between peristaltic pumps and diaphragm pumps. So Warren, if you wouldn't mind leading off, perhaps you could just describe the differences um, between the peristaltic pump and the diaphragm pump uh, in terms of you know construction and operation? Um, I think the first thing is important to remember is that you do get two different types of diaphragm pumps. Uh, you get a single diaphragm and you get a double diaphragm. And obviously the double diaphragm is a, they do the same things in each chamber, but the, uh, the double diaphragm pump is obviously a lot more expensive and it's a, a lot uh, larger. So the diaphragm pump very simply works on the process that if you, if you cupped your hands together and you just moved them in and out, uh, that would be the, the process with which a diaphragm pump works. Rather than as children, we put our hands into water, squeeze the water together and the water would fly out from our hands. So normally you need some type of force to actually operate that diaphragm. And in most instances, it's air. So you need air to actually move the diaphragms backwards and forwards so that they can pump. Because of the action of the double, of the double diaphragm or the single diaphragm, you also need a series of valves, which are very often a ball in a seat. Because what happens is that as the, peristal, as the double diaphragm opens, a valve opens and it draws the, the product in. Then that diaphragm when it closes that valve closes and the the opposite valve opens so that you can pump out so you can imagine not only do you have a diaphragm which is a very simple device but you have a series of valves uh, which operate that and which allow it to operate correctly which can be very problematic a peristaltic pump however is simply just a hose that is being compressed by a, se a, a, a series of rollers in, a, in most instances two or three and the process is very gentle, the, squeeze, the tube is squeezed and the product is passes through the tube in a very gentle fashion and moves out the other side. That's the basic difference between the two pumps. Okay, so can you talk us through the advantages and disadvantages of each pump type and relative to one another? Well, yes, I, th I think the first and major one, and this is a, obviously a discussion we often have with customers, they they will tell us that the diaphragm pump is a lot cheaper than the peristaltic pump, but somehow along the line they tend to forget that it needs a compressor. Uh, and the power of the compressor to drive a whole series of, of uh, diaphragm pumps can be a fairly large compressor. So you don't need a compressor with a peristaltic pump. You have no valves which can block. You have no valves which can stick as you do with a uh, diaphragm pump. The other thing about a diaphragm pump uh, if you've ever walked through a factory with a whole lot of diaphragm pumps, they're extremely noisy because you've got the sound of this air ejecting, air pumping, air ejecting, air pumping coming in, air eject, uh, coming out. And they can be a, a whole series in a room can be very, very noisy. Obviously, the valves are problematic uh, because if you get a sticky product or you get solids, you can get the solid building up in the seat and the valves don't uh, seat properly or don't open properly in which case the pump doesn't pump at all. So where they, why they are quite an inexpensive pump, they can also be very high maintenance costs and very problematic. And in fact, if you go to plants, you will invariably, when you walk into the workshop, you will see a whole lot of, of double diaphragm pumps on the shelf, which have been taken out of service and put away simply because they are quite difficult and problematic to strip down and maintain. So. That's the basic uh, difference between the two pumps. But the biggest difference of all is the compressor. The fact that you need a compressor and sometimes a standby compressor in case the one compressor fails. Okay. So are there, are there certain duties or jobs that a diaphragm pump can do that a peristaltic can't or vice versa? I cannot, I cannot think of any. I, I cannot think of any pump anywhere where a peristaltic pump would not be able to be uh, superior or equal to a diaphragm pump in terms of its operation. There's very few products that a peristaltic pump cannot pump. 
The limitations are, as I say, high temperature, um, and 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 that is normally part of the envelope that we design to. You can certainly get higher temperatures with a double diaphragm pump, and that is because it has it can have a Teflon membrane, and the Teflon membrane can take a higher, a large, higher temperature than a peristaltic pump can with its uh, natural rubber hose. So I would say temperature is one application where a diaphragm pump could be and probably would be uh, uh, more practical to use than a peristaltic pump. But that is really the only application that I can think uh, that it would be, uh, it would be, let's call it better used than a peristaltic. Okay. So barring very high temperature applications requiring, uh, you know, a Teflon interior coating, once you take the ancillary equipment cost into account, such as a, you know, compressor, um, as well as operating costs, a uh, peristaltic pump can be a great alternative to any duty currently being served by a diaphragm pump. Absolutely. I, I, I would say so without correction. The, um, the thing about it is that the peristaltic pump has a, uh, particularly on difficult applications or corrosive applications, it handles them with ease. It has a very long tube life and maintenance intervals are very, very far uh, in between. Whereas the double diaphragm on, on difficult applications where there's slurries or thick products, I would say that you'd probably have to maintain those diaphragms probably five or six times within the life of the hose of a peristaltic pump. So the, uh, although they are relatively inexpensive from a capital point of view, uh, they are quite expensive in terms of maintenance. And that is the balance that normally customers have to put together. Uh, that will, and also the fact that you have an extra piece of equipment, which is the compressor, which you also have to maintain. Okay. Well, Warren, thanks so much for sharing your technical expertise and your experience uh, with us today. Really appreciate it, and I look forward to talking pumps again in the future. Good, Andrew. Nice chatting to you again. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.